Oh yeah, build number four on Sawdust and Wanderlust. Today, it's a belt and watch holder. I made one of these just because I needed it. I ended up putting it for sale on my Etsy and sold a few of them. So I guess that means people like it. Other people might think it's a waste of time. Good news about this build is it's super cheap to do. The most expensive part are these hooks, which are like six bucks from Walmart. And then you're just using one eight foot one by two and one eight foot one by three, some brad nails and some glue. And then you can hang it whichever way you want. You can either do sawtooth hangers on the back or D-rings. I like D-rings a little bit better, but uh, it's fun, let's do it, okay? Let's just build it, dude. Let's build it. You can't control, we fly. We fly, try so hard together, and we might, we might be lost, but not forever. Let's think a lot, you simply need to know. But sun and rain and trust in letting go. First step is to get into the cuts. Your 1x3 you're cutting at around 31 inches and then the 1x2 you're going to have 7 cuts. One cut is going to be at 12 inches and you're going to have 6 cuts at 7 inches. Don't say you're ridiculous, you're not even close. Don't wish for indifference, you're not one of those. We fall, we fall. For sanding, I did this by hand. Just did it with some 120 grit sandpaper. The main goal is just to take off any rough edges or any sharp edges or splinters, so that way when you're handling it, you don't get any splinters. And also, when you're putting your watches on there, you're not going to damage the wristbands on the watch. There's things in life you simply need to know. But sun and rain and trust in letting go. It takes a bit of suffering, sleepless nights and wandering. After you sand, get to staining. I'm making a few of these because I'm going to be selling these on my Etsy, and it's always easier and more time efficient to batch these out if you're making stuff to sell. So if you're making one for yourself, obviously just go ahead and do one. But if you pick up just one extra one by two, uh, you can make three of these. So if you want to make one for yourself and sell some, you can make a little extra money on the side. Trust in letting go. It takes a bit of suffering, sleepless nights and wandering before you make it safely to the end. So take your seven inch pieces and glue and clamp them together. Be careful about how much glue you use because you don't want over squeeze like this, but if you do, just take a damp rag and wipe it over and that'll get rid of that. But uh, so glue them, clamp them, and then shoot some two inch brad nails through on both sides and then repeat this process until you've got three of these pieces and these are gonna be what the actual uh, watches rest on. Next thing is to take your 12 inch piece, find the center, throw some glue in there and then brad nail that into the one by three and then just throw the pieces on there to kind of line everything up to see how it's going to look. Once you get that 12 inch piece locked in, it's time to mess with the seven inch pieces. You're going to want to take them, line them up, throw some glue and some brad nails in those as well. Now it's much easier to throw some glue and brad nail it from the front, but then you got those little brad nail holes, which I try to avoid as often as possible. So what I do is I clamp it up and then I shoot some brad nails in from the bottom and, I, and then I rotate the clamp around to the other side just so I can get some brad nails in on that side. After you've got all the wood put together, it's time to put in the hanging accessories. I'm using D-rings and it's easier to put these in before I put the hooks on for the belts. That way I can lay the piece down flat and screw it in properly. You lay beside me, you held my hand in the dark. I started fighting. Cause I was... The last step is to put in your hooks to hang the belts on. 
For these, I've got five of them, and there's going to be five-inch spacing between each one. So from the end of the watch holder, I've got them at five inches, 10 inches, 15 inches, 20, and 25. For these, you want to line them up as best as possible so it's you know the most aesthetically pleasing. I've got them about a half inch down from the top of the 1x3. And then so I line them up, pre-drill holes, and then screw in the holes just so it's a little bit easier to line everything up. So Thanks for tuning in. I really love doing this stuff. I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Go ahead and like and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me letting YouTube know that you know I'm not doing a terrible job. I mean, I probably should have more subscribers. I haven't showed any dead bodies or tased any rats and that really seems like major key nowadays for a successful YouTube campaign. So, if uh, I don't mess that up now, I guess I'll just... <sighs> Sawdust Dave. Signing out.